Hey guys, everything we covered in the last section regarding the time value of money concept is super important to understanding this section which revolves around notes receivable, so make sure to check out that last section if you haven't. And we're beginning our course on Intermediate Accounting 1 now, even though we did start it with the time value of money section, it was more associated with finance rather than accounting. And Intermediate Accounting 1 covers the asset side of the balance sheets, and we're going to be starting with the asset notes receivable. So on the right hand side, you're going to see a list of assets that are normally owned by a company. And I wanted you to just make a note of notes receivable in that it can be a current asset or a long-term asset. And notes receivable does comply with the definition of an asset as per IFRS. As you can see on the left-hand side, an asset is a resource controlled by the enterprise as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the enterprise. So if we were to take a second to actually break that down, notes receivable is an asset and it usually arises from lending amounts of money. So if we lend a certain amount of money to a party, we control that debt. And we control when we're gonna receive the interest and the principal back. And we also control the legal title to that debt. And when we make a certain, when we lend a certain amount of money, it's always going to be a past event and it will only be recorded when we've actually lent the money. And finally, Notes receivable as an asset because there is a future economic benefit in that we're going to receive the cash that we've lent back at the end of the term and we're also going to receive interest income. So it does meet all the criteria of an asset. And a quick way to remember the definition of an asset is to think of this famous quote in that who controls the past controls the future. And I just came up with this to actually uh, remember what the definition of an asset is. And it's actually one of my favorite quotes from a book uh, that I've read. If you can guess what it is, you get some bonus points, uh, but don't expect to redeem those for any prizes. And you can see that it has the three keywords of an asset in that there's control, it has to be a past transaction, and the asset must yield a future economic benefit. So it's a really simple way to remember the definition of an asset. So let's go ahead and talk about the details of what a notes receivable asset is. So as you can gauge from the title, notes receivable is actually a physical note in that it has to be a written promissory note. So unlike accounts receivable in which it's usually uh, an oral or verbal contract, notes receivable must be in writing and there must be signatures signed for each party. And the second point is that notes receivable can be a short or current asset or a long term asset. It actually depends on how long uh, the note exists for. It can be a six month note or it can be a five year note. So it can be a current or long term asset. And notes receivable always has an element of interest. Which is important because whenever we loan money, there is always the cost of time in which when we when we uh, lend money, there's always gonna be inflation eating away at our loan, so we must charge an interest to actually uh, cover the, the inflation, but also covers the liability of the loan that we're, uh, that we're uh, creating. So the interest covers the inflation and the liability. And the final part of a notes receivable is that it's a negotiable instrument. And this might be a little bit more confusing because if you haven't taken business law, you might be not familiar with this term. And I'll quickly go over what a negotiable instrument is. Uh, first, I just want to cover what a contract is simply. And a contract has an offer, has three parts, an offer, an acceptance, 
and consideration. And you can consider consideration as another term for value. So both parties must give up something of value. So all three parts must, must go down in order for a contract to be valid. So let's go over what a negotiable instrument is now. So let's say we have a contract between two parties. We have a lender and we have a borrower. The borrower. And they, or the lender lends $1,000 to the borrower and they shake on the deal and it's a completely verbal contract. So in this case, the lender can sue the borrower, but the lender would not be able to get, for instance, me over here with my top hat on. They can't get me to collect the money and sue the borrower because uh, you can't get your friend to sue the borrower as the contract can only be enforced by someone who has privity. So you only can, the, the contract only applies to the parties that create the contract. But a negotiable instrument is a bit different. So when we structure this from a verbal contract to actually a written contract, so then it's a notes receivable amount, it becomes a negotiable instrument and the lender can actually then sell this amount to me, Dave, and I can buy the debt. So the the asset has transferred and I actually have the power to sue the borrower. So anyone who holds the negotiable instrument is then parts of, they have the same rights uh, as the lender would have in the initial contract. So that's what it means by a negotiable instrument. And I think that's basically what I wanted to cover in this tutorial. So in the next one, we're actually going to be looking how to report a notes receivable asset and go through uh, the interest journal entries that are going to be formulated. So I'll see you guys in the next one.